American copper deposits. Okay. We'll kind of finish off on a, um, you know, kind of out there, you know, you guys hear me talk about, you know, petrified Titans and, you know, the movie avatar I mentioned a lot, but, uh, yeah, this one's really good. And just, uh, you know, kind of let your mind wander as I read this and, you know, kind of think about what the world may have been like, you know, a few epochs ago. Mexican Copper Deposit, a wonderful story of discoveries now to the science of mineralogy. Wonderful stories are those that come from New Mexico concerning an excitement over mineral discoveries said to have been made in the vicinity of the ancient Spanish mission, Nabiquin. It was established in 1550. The copper deposits, which are now attracting so much attention, are said to have been worked for two score years until 1599. The Spaniards <clears throat> were driven out of the country by natives. This was the result of an uprising of the part of the natives who had been made peons or slaves by the conquerors and forced to work on the copper deposits. Numerous old tunnels and the ruins of an old furnace are regarded as confirmatory proof of the le legends regarding operations there in the early days of the Spanish invasion and occupation of the country. Abiquin is 50 or 60 miles northwest of Santa Fe and the nearest railway joint being Espinoa and the southern terminus of the New Mexico branch of the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad. From Esquana to Abiquin, the, the distance is 30 miles to the west. All manners of stories regarding the nature and importance of these deposits are current. One of these is reproduced. Something entirely new to the science of mineralogy has been unearthed during the last six months. It is a forest of logs petrified into rich copper ore that averages 60 percent copper and 30 to 40 ounces of silver to the ton now this is incredible you guys okay a forest of logs petrified into rich copper ore that averages 60 percent copper okay all the trees all the different trees they mineralize into different minerals at different rates these ones, 60% copper, 30 to 40 ounces of silver to the ton. Now, we've talked about finding petrified men and animals that were turned into quartz and copper and silver and gold. The logs seem to have floated in some kind of a mineral solution, evidently in the carnivorous period, carboniferous, sorry, a sediment of conglomerate pebbles and calcareous mat settled between them dividing them as they are now found this is where it gets really interesting if it isn't already this seam of conglomerate is about 30 feet thick and extends on both sides of the canyon a distance of eight miles each way so there are 16 miles of copper bearing seam filled thousands of feet back with copper logs. 16 miles, thousands of feet wide, hundreds of feet thick of petrified logs. This is some kind of a flood, you guys. Something happened, knocked all these trees over, or um, a, a plasma storm or something petrified the trees and then they were all knocked over. 16 miles long, thousands of feet wide, hundreds of feet thick. 16 miles, thousands of feet, the 600 feet deep. So there's 600 feet of sand and rock above this formation. Okay, 600 feet of sand and rock above this petrified forest. Some of the logs have already yield over two car loads each. And there are logs over four feet thick. At first, it was thought that the little branches and knots of the trees were only small pockets of copper, and a little attention was paid to the canyon. It was only when its true nature was discovered 
that it began to boom and now full of prospectors, many of whom have already several carloads of ore to ship. Incredible destruction, petrifactions, a river of petrified trees, 16 miles long, thousands of feet wide, covered by 600 feet of sand and rock, where they're finding trees that are 60% copper. Unbelievable, okay? Unbelievable. So yeah, we're out of time. Um, 